Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> I can't see any of you at all, but I, I'm sure there's a room full of people down there. My name is Paul Ed. I'm the current headmaster of Birkdale School, and uh, it really is my privilege to welcome you to Birkdale this evening uh, for a memorial lecture in honour of John Paul, headmaster of Birkdale from 1963 until 1983 and who sadly died recently. Before Michael Palin comes to speak to us, the Reverend Michael Hepworth, former headmaster, will talk uh, about John Hall. Uh, Michael Hepworth attended Birkdale as a pupil and then served as headmaster from 1983 until 1998. And uh, he's perhaps the best, the person best placed to reflect upon John Hall, upon his time at Birkdale, and upon his legacy to the school. Thank you Paul for your welcome, it's great to be back <clears throat> uh, and it's good, so good to be sharing a platform with Michael Payne. Not something I do very often and I'm very privileged to be doing it tonight. We were at Birkdale together, um, I'm much older than he is, but we did overlap for a bit. And uh, last time he was here, we um, had our photographs taken in front of the Honours Board, which we both had our names on. And that was um, the, for the Healy Scripture Prize, which I won six, eight years ahead of him. I'm not sure what that says about the Healy Scripture Prize. Or <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's great to, to, to see him back here tonight. His desire to put you at the center of all he did. His untiring energy and concern for others. His humor, his gentle kindness, his humility. For all that he gave him of himself over 35 memorable years to Birkdale. We honor his memory today in the name of Jesus Christ, his Lord, and Saviour. Amen. Thank you for headmasters, um, past uh, and present, Dorothy and all the Hall family here tonight, old Birkdalians, young Birkdalians, those lucky enough to Know about Dalian. <laughs> <laughs> it really is a great delight and an honour to have been asked to unveil the portrait here in Healy Hall of a great about Dalian. Indeed, someone had his name not been John Hall, <coughs> might have had a hall named after himself. <laughs> 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 Do, let me unveil the portrait. <laughs> I'm afraid we have no drum roll, do we? <laughs> it's supposed to be a musical school. Here we go. And there we are. <laughs> I think the artist Stephen Lingham has done a fantastic job. He's sort of got the um, he's got the smile, he's also got the the sort of the strength of character in there, and uh, I think we'd ask Steve, would you come forward? Just take a bow. This is the man who's painted. <laughs> Mr. Hall, as I, as I knew, Mr. Hall made you work hard. That was important. I think his own high standards, compared with the high standards that he expected of us were the reasons why he was such a good teacher. We kept up over the years. In fact, I interviewed John here at Birkdale, or he was interviewed, for a series called Comic Roots in 1983, um, when the producer made the mistake of asking John on camera to, accept, to assess my comic rather than my geographical career. It's not the sort of humor that appeals to me. <laughs> Okay, 20 years of travelling, we've got to get a quick to the beginnings. Uh, begin at the beginning. This is the Reform Club in um, 
in Pall Mall in London, where the very first step on my journey, first journey around the world, around the world in 80 days, began. A very quick story was that uh, I just, why did I get into all this? I just finished a film called A Fish Called Wanda, and um, there was nothing else around. Python had finished, there were no good films, and the BBC rang me up and said, could they um, talk to me about a new project they had? And I said, yes, what is it? So we can't tell you. <laughs> very BBC. We were well, happy to talk to you personally at home. Um, so I think it's just BBC ploy to get slightly better coffee than they get at the TV <laughs> centre. Anyway, the head of documentaries came round and he, he gave me this wonderful speech. He said, we've got an idea which only someone like you, with your combination of independence, your humour, your dogginess, your physical um, your energy, your courage, your intellectual breadth, you're the only person who's going to do this. Um, so, of course, I said, I'm I susceptible to a bit of flattery. I said, sure, yeah, when do we start? And so it began. And it was only halfway round the world. We were in Madras, I think, waiting to get another boat that had failed to turn up, when the director had had a beer or two, confessed to me that I was the fifth person they got. <laughs> and endings. This is ending of my talk tonight, and also just endings of programmes. It's always great to be back home after you've been on the road for, I think, the longest we were ever on the road was about five months from pole to pole, which is so um, terrific um, when you get home. But you have to make sure that the ending of the programme sums up what you have been through. You have to be prepared to, to talk about what you've, uh, what you've gone through. And this is at the South Pole. Now, the South Pole is actually managed, if you can call it that, by the Americans on behalf of the international scientific community. So although this is the place where Scott Amazon got to, um, well, a hundred years ago, uh, almost, uh, this is what it looks like now. And um, I, uh, we got to the South Pole. Uh, it, it, uh, it looks rather pretty and comfortable there. This was about minus, was minus 50 degrees with wind chill. I had to do my last piece of camera and the cameraman had said this is going to be very difficult because, you know, the camera might freeze up. Um, a lot of problems, so you've just got to do it first time round and get it right, okay? Um, so, I mean, you know, no pressure there, so I've been ages. And, and it's about, it's quite high up the South Pole, so I actually was also suffering from altitude sickness as well as intense cold. And I went over this thing and in fact, we, we got out there, I said, okay, let's do it. And I did, I think about over a minute, must have been a minute and 15 seconds, absolutely perfectly. And I was so pleased with myself, absolutely every word right. I said, right, let's go. And I noticed that our sound recorder was kind of looking at me in an odd way. And he was sort of grinning. And I said, yeah, it's good, isn't it? He said, well, no, I'm not grinning for that. So I think you might want to listen to it again. I said, what do you mean? We've done it. I got it right, didn't I? Let's just have a listen. So I put the headphones on there at the South Pole and listen. And I, I, I realised what he meant. So I'd been trying to encapsulate what an extraordinary thing it was for me to be at the South Pole, you know, growing up in Sheffield, reading these things about my heroes. And I, I, I said at one point, and I thought well, I got it just right, I said, um, as a schoolboy in Sheffield, I can remember reading about the exploits of Scott and Allenson under the bedclothes at night. <laughs> And of course, he was absolutely right. And once you know you've done that, everything falls apart. The next take he did, in this blistering cold, um, I got it completely wrong. And I said, um, I'm standing here at 10,000 degrees. Oh, <laughs> so it's about take seven by the time I got to the end of it. So it can be, it can be tricky doing, um, doing the take. And here, just as this is our crew at the end of Round the World in 80 Days, when we got back to the Reform Club, and those of you who might have read the book or seen the programme will know that we were not allowed back in. 79 days and 7 hours after leaving the Reform Club, where you know, Phileas Fogg had left in the story, we got back, a few hours to spare, we got all the way around the world, knocked on the doors, and said, no, you can't come in, I'm afraid. We've got a function. <laughs> <laughs> I just could not believe it. And they wouldn't, they wouldn't let the cameras in. So, um, our, our producer said, well, well, let's mock up something. I said, no, no, let's do our last piece here and say exactly what's happened. 
And so, you know, I, I did my last piece of camera on the steps of the Reform Club. You can see there's the, there's the plaque, and I said they wouldn't let us in. And it's been wonderful ever since because people have asked, especially Americans for some reason, just can't believe it. You know, what, you've been around the world from the Reform Club, you come back, they won't let you in. And I said, well, that's what clubs are about. You know? <laughs> Letting people in, it's about keeping people out. <laughs> so we learned something all the way along. Anyway, that, that is just very, very roughly a few glimpses of how we make the programmes. Um, thank you all for your tolerance tonight. And once again, uh, I really must uh, reiterate that uh, John Hall was an inspiration. He was one of those teachers which people pick out and say, someone made a difference to your life. And you may think it probably wasn't the right thing to do for me to go around the world and do all these silly things, but um, on the other hand, I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about this country, I've learned a lot about places I've been to, and I suppose it was the greatest geography lesson ever, apart from Mr. Hawkes. Thank you. <laughs>